first of all, have you seen the run? Okay. You know, like we got to do these victory laps from time to time. I think it was yeah. like one of the first few times I ever went on CNBC. I had a city guy and me, and it was like a bull bear case. And basically he was putting the price target at like 60 bucks and just beating up Oracle, no innovation, no disruption, you know, bad business model, customers hate them. And I basically came in there and said, I think you're totally missing it. This was right as Gen 2 Cloud was starting to take shape. You were seeing this run since the acquisitions of NetSuite Fusion. Um, and this mountain of data the company has at its disposal. And I mean, just what a good quarter. I mean, the growth, you know, fiscal revenue up 18%, 22 in constant currency. Now, remember, that's faster growth than Salesforce. And, and I'm not saying that to knock Salesforce. I think Salesforce has been kind of a bellwether of software yeah. and growth and, you know, Oracle has found it's it's a bit of its stride now. And Pat, some of the numbers I think that were really interesting, and you and I both shared that uh, that cool uh, app economy uh, that shows kind of how the company makes money. But outside of that, there were some data points that they they talked about in their their growth. Look, um, infrastructure growth of sixty three percent for the full year. So OCI's infrastructure right now is growing at about three times the clip of the other cloud providers. Now. They're not breaking out infrastructure anymore to the degree that, which we would need to do a full on comparison. But I don't know. No. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? I don't think they, they break out just kind of IaaS anymore. They in any really other are breaking out IaaS now. Is sure. it Oracle. Oh, right. Right. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oracle. I mean, they can't, I can't compare to Oracle to what I guess I'm saying is my assertion is that at uh, 63 for the year, 77 for Q4, they're taking share. They're, at this point, Oracle is actually has to be taking market share now, albeit it's a pretty small number at about 1.5 billion. Yeah. But that yeah. is interesting because when you're growing at three times the market rate, somebody, it means some customers, and it, I have to imagine it's a combination of the more useful, utilitous uh, Gen 2 and also the aggressive pricing that, that Oracle has. But Oracle still has great margin, so I want to make that pretty clear. The other thing that was really, um, Pat, that was pretty impressive was the forty-five percent growth in their SaaS and cloud application business. Where, where did that come from? I, I, it does not calculate. I mean, again, are they taking business off of Dynamics and and off of Salesforce and off of like SAP? Like you know, and, and they're never um, they're never ones to not tell you on their on their earnings call. So they gave some good examples of customer wins that they that they've taken. But Pat, I mean, these are really really impressive growth numbers now that's the cloud application business now i do want to be clear they split out applications fusion and netsuite so netsuite's growing in the mid-20s fusion's in the mid-20s and then the rest of their cloud application which is some of their cx and apps and stuff that's growing at 45 percent but still a really impressive growth rate across the board the company also had a pretty big um announcement around its uh, you know some of the, what it's doing around gen ai um and so it's basically going after having low cost they partner with nvidia but low cost gpu clusters so they're they're going to take the pricing model the low price model to the market but this is something i've said for a while and it was verified for me when i went to the google executive cloud forum and i had customers and i was talking to some of the leaders the ones that are actually doing the um google's tpu and they're they were doing the nvidia partnerships and i asked the question i said as Gen AI is scaling and you're doing more AI with more customers, I said, do the customers care which silicon they're running anymore? If they're if it's all done in Vertex, yeah. if it's all done using your front end. And basically what they said is that, that there is a significant shift. They were very bullish about NVIDIA and they understand the value of that relationship. So they were not by any means poo-pooing that. But they basically did say that as more and more customers and startups, unless they're doing these really large complex training and you know that customers are more interested in just the efficiency and cost of being able to spin up ai apps like in a gen ai app builder yeah. so it's kind of what's going on there so you do have to wonder is there a is there sort of an interesting market opportunity for a pivot for oracle for those that do have these big training workloads that if they can be the price uh performance leader in terms of offering the same hardware will they have a chance to take some uh, additional market and I mean, clearly they're doing so with traditional cloud workloads, Pat. So, you know, look, it was an overall strong performance. And of course you have a company that pays a dividend that consistently does buybacks and returns to shareholders. And so no matter what, you know, my t-shirt Pat of my rush class in, in college said loved or hated, but never ignored. 
<laughs> and I think that that's really, you know, uh, apropos for uh, uh, Oracle, you know, but the company just keeps executing and you got to give them credit for that. Yeah, so I'm going to do a little bit of a victory lap as well. Um, Gen 1, I was brutal. Uh, and I, I wrote brutal stuff about Gen 1 OCI because it wasn't any good. It was overpriced, low performance. Uh, the technology was dated. Uh, to the company's credit, Gen 2 is literally just, just a miracle. And if you look at when the infrastructure was created, it's actually the youngest infrastructure architecture out there right now. So, you know, when Larry got on the call and he's talking about generative AI and he's saying, hey, we have the highest performance, lowest cost, and the biggest amount of scalability, uh, most people might do an eye roll and say, okay, you know, that's, that, that's Larry, uh, uh, Larry talking about, Larry CTO and founder Larry Ellison and chairman, but you, you, you have to pay attention, right, uh, to, to what he is saying given the success that they're having with uh, generative AI. And listen, I'm not confused about scale, okay? I know that AWS, Azure, and GCP uh, have more scale, but AWS started 19 years ago. And uh, Gen 2, I think, is two to three years years old. And the business model that they have, too, is, is very interesting. Some cloud providers charge more for the basics uh, than they do for the add-ons. And, and that said, that's a theory that says, hey, if I can entice people with the add-ons and they pull through high-priced basics, that makes sense. Oracle is pricing their basics uh, low and their add-ons high, which is another way uh, to, do, to do pricing. And uh, their business success is you know, shows that, it, that it's working again. Whether it's 20 times smaller, 10, I, I, I don't care. This is a, a long game. You have to have scale uh, and show up and you have to build it. And then much bigger things uh, can happen. So uh, kudos to Oracle for the beat beat raise um, and the increased details, right? That 45% growth on SaaS apps, I have never seen that before, right? Like what have they shown from Fusion and NetSuite has always been ERP. Now they showed ERP for both, but that's, you know, a, 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 a t basically a 20%, 20 plus percent. Uh, I've never seen this 45% and I got to dig in and see where this comes from.